Stay tuned in this video while I show you how to fix the Kyocera error C6050. This error C6050 has to do with uh, the thermistor or the fuser lamp. And this thermistor is located inside the fuser unit. The problem is that sometimes this thermistor gets dirty and cleaning it will resolve that error. 6050. So stay tuned while I take you through the process. So is it that the heat, the fuser unit is not heating properly or there is a dust or dirt that is um, that is blocking the heat on that is blocking the heat uh, from circulating on the other part of the printer. So I'm going to show you how to fix the issue. So the first thing I want to do is to shut this printer down. The printer is on. I'm going to shut it down first of all. Then, yes. So this is an ecosystem 2640i printer, but it can work for any other model of printer that you might have. All right, so I've shut it down. I'm going to remove the, the power cable that is plugged to, to the printer. Then I'm going to turn uh, the printer backward so that you can see what I'm doing. And the first thing you want to remove is this casing. This back casing is protecting or covering the fuser unit. So I'm going to carefully remove this um, back cover. So I'm going to remove this this way and gently get a flat screw, screwdriver like this and then pry open this. Okay, so this is going to come off easily. Then keep this aside. Then I am going to get this one out. So my flask driver, I will just gently pry it open on this side. And then on the other side, it should be able to come out easily this way. So I am going to keep this aside. So I have my, this is my fuser unit and this is where the problem is coming from. Uh, the problem with the fuser units will likely be the thermistor. Something is wrong with the heat system on the fuser unit. Is it that the thermistor is not working or the thermistor just needs some cleaning? So to do that, I have to remove this fuser unit first so that I can assess the thermistor because the thermistor is inside this fuser unit. All right, so we have some set of screws here and we have another two set of screws here, but you won't be able to assess these two set of screws here until you remove this plastic cover. So I'll go ahead and remove the plastic cover. Just the same way you remove the other plastic cover here by prying it open. The same thing you're going to do here. You gently pry this open. This is going to come off easily. And then you assess one of the screws. So there's one of one screw remaining because there has to be two screws. One screw here, one screw here. Just the same way there's one screw here and there's another screw here. So uh, I'm going to gently pry this open also. You can see this came off easily as well. Now I have been able to assess the, the screws. So I will just carefully remove the screw. So I have my four, four screws. So this will not come out easily because we still have some cables that is attached to, to the printer, to the printer board. And we need to remove those screws or uh, those clip also. So there is a screw that is holding this cover here. If I do not remove the, this cover here, I won't be able to assess that cable. So I'm going to remove this and then remove this also. All right. So I'll remove this here. Keep this aside and then you notice that 
you notice that we have the the clips here so what i'm going to do is to carefully unplug the two clips here so when that is unplugged the next thing i'm going to do is to gently remove the fuser unit by pulling it out so i'll carefully remove the fuser unit yeah all right so this is what the fuser unit looks like and this is the area that we are going to be working on yeah So I have my foil here. I'm going to open up this foil so that I can assess the thermistor and see the state of the thermistor. If it is broken or if there is a problem with the thermistor. So the first thing I want to do is to remove this top um, plastic um, metal panel. So it has four screws. There's one screw here. There's another screw here, another screw here and here. So I will remove all these screws. You can use any, you can use your regular star screwdriver. The reason why I'm using this is so that it will be faster. So uh, my, I've removed the four screws. I'll take out this and set it aside. Then I'm going to remove this. Uh, plastic cover on the two edge there's one on the right and there's one on the left and there's two screw two screw is holding them down there's one screw here and there's another screw here so After removing the two screws, the I'm going to remove this clip here. There's a plastic clip here. So my flat screwdriver, I remove the clip and set it aside. Then this is going to come off easily. This is the first one. There's another one here that I need to remove. So I'll take out these two screws. I'm just holding them. All right, so I have, this is what I have now. The next thing I'm going to do is to remove these two screws here. This is going to come off with the spring. Don't worry, just remove it together with the spring. So the same thing you're going to do here. It's going to come off with the spring so that I can remove this complete panel. And to do that, I have two screws that is holding this down. So I have one here, then I have another one here. So let's so this is what the screw looks like. It's supposed to come off with this this metal cover so i'll set that aside here then over to this other side i have the same thing and you can see this screw here so i'm going to make use of manual screwdriver to get it out
So I have the second one on the other side. This is what it's going to look like when it comes with this flat head screw. So I'm going to set that aside. But there is another screw here that you need to be aware of. You can see this other screw here. So I'm going to remove that so that it will release it will release it completely. All right. So this you can see I've separated I've separated um, separated the two. So I have this here, and this is the area I'm going to be working on because this is where the this is where the thermistor is. So I'm going to set this aside while I work on this area. So to be able to assess the, the thermistor inside, I'm going to um, remove or clip these cables. So I'll gently get my flathead screwdriver, press this down and pull it back. So I'm going to press this down and pull back. Press this down and pull back. And I'm going to remove this. So I'll remove this screw on this side. Gently get this out. I'm going to repeat the same thing here. I'll remove this screw here. Then I'm going to take out these screws on this side. You see, this is going to come off. Then I'm going to unclip this and unclip this also. And the reason is because I will take out this top plastic over here. So to do that here, there is this, this plastic is locked to, there's a hole here and this is where the lock is. So once I raise the lock, I push it front a bit, this is going to come off easily. Now that that plastic is out, what I'm going to do next is to remove the screw that is holding this down. So I'm going to remove this one screw here. There's another one here that I'm going to take out. So I take out this screw here. And I'm going to take out this other screw here. Okay, so this is going to come off easily like this. Mm. 
this is the foil i've set the foil aside and this is the area that we are going to be working on you can see what the thermistor look like this is the thermistor or diffuser lamp whichever one you want to call it this is what generates heat and then if this is broken it's going to give you error 6000 or error 6050 which of them is going to give you that error 6000 if it's broken and if it is not hitting properly if this is bad it's going to give you error 6050 so whichever one is giving you error 6000 6050 this is where the problem is so if yours is not broken and it's giving you error 6050 the problem will likely be that this thermistor is bad or it is covered with dust and debris that is blocking the um, heat from circulating or heating properly so what i'm going to do is to clean this off and then couple it
the way to fix him back. So the first thing we want to do is to fix this sensor back inside. I don't even, this sensor might be a bit tricky, but there's something you'll be able to fix if you. So, what you're going to look out for is fixing this. This thing has to lock inside this space here. And then ensure that it locks inside the other space at the other end. And to enter this and enter this here. My mat do screws removed from here, the ones that have springs and then. Alright, so. I'm going to fix screw for, for the sensor. Mm -hmm. Alright, sensor is back. And then I'm going to fix this one back. Thank you. 
Thank you.